Hey everybody, welcome, happy Tuesday. We're gonna have some fun today. Welcome back to the stream. It's Tuesday, so it's hardware hacking day, and uh, we're gonna do some new stuff. This is actually gonna be gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I mentioned on, on Twitter, various other social channels that I'm gonna be starting a new hardware project this week. Um, new as in resuscitating an old hardware project. So I'm gonna be taking a project that um, I started working on about three or four years ago and bring it up to 2019. So um, I'm gonna share a bit about this as we, uh, as we go along. So let me slide over here just a little bit. And uh, I wanna share Brew Buddy. This is a project that I started, uh, I think back in 2015. And it is designed to be, it's a, a homebrew monitoring solution. So uh, there's a couple of moving pieces to this, but um, I, I built this project to do a couple of different things to actually monitor the temperature during the homebrewing process. So I have this um, type K thermocouple here and, and actually give me information while I'm brewing to actually show on a screen the temperature readings, um, during during the brewing process one of the primary reasons for that uh if you're a home brewer is not only you know it was it was a nerd thing of course i wanted to actually just track temperature readings and show a little graph and you know do all that iot fun kind of stuff um, but i also had a need during the brewing process to keep track of how quickly i was able to get the wort back to room temperature after i was done with the boiling process hey joe welcome Thank you, as always, for jumping in. Um, but I actually wanted, there's an important part for most brews is when you're actually done with the boil and you remove the wort, um, the pre-fermented beer, uh, off of boil, you wanna get it back to room temperature as quickly as possible. What a lot of home brewers do to do that is use an ice bath. Uh, you could use something called the wort chiller, which is a, a brass uh, rod that's twisted around several times that you stick in. To the wart and then you run uh, cold water through the brass rod so that uh, it cools it pretty quickly. But I wanted to sort of see how quickly I could get that process down over time. And so um, let me just actually give you a quick demo of the, of the project as it stands circa 2016. So this is something I'm powering up for the first time uh, in a couple of years and then we'll talk about what I want to do differently. So I'm gonna power it up here, and you'll see, get, get the autofocus going. Oh, no autofocus, there we go. Give me a little screen there, ah, oh, it's upside down, of course. So now it actually shows it's waiting, waiting for the brew after it starts up. And so the way that this works is when I'm ready to brew a new batch of beer, let's see if I can raise this up. So I have a hot pot here and a, and, a, and a mug. It'll be success in this stream if I don't burn myself today. That'll be good. So right now I'm just waiting for a brew to happen. So the way that that works is I can actually start the brew from my dashboard here. Uh, and then when that starts, hold on. Ah. We're gonna switch screens here real quick because I wanna walk through the code as well. Um, but let me go in just really quick. And take a look, I'm missing something in the command. Let me go back to my, I'll show my code screen here real quick. <clears throat> there we go, the command to start. That's what I'm looking for. All right. So now, turn this back on, and then click Start. Actually, see something happen to the screen. So I'm getting a, a timer and elapsed time on the screen. I'm getting sort of a current temperature readings. 
and this will increase as my glass heats up. And then also, if you see at the bottom of the screen, I have a couple of dots that sort of represent a bit of a graph. This actually shows temp history uh, over the last few moments and <laughs> seeing smoke. That water's heating up pretty quick because I'm seeing some steam rise off of it already. So you'll see that that temperature will increase very slowly over time. Turn that off before I burn anything. The crux of this demo is there's a couple of different moving pieces. I mentioned the thermocouple. There's a screen that's in here. Um, and I had sort of various, various iterations that I've built over the course of the last couple of years. Starting with sort of this first custom PCB here. I actually created it on a CNC mill originally. Then created this first custom PCB with a particle photon. A photon that's actually soldered in straight in, unfortunately, so to never be recovered. Um, and then there are a few iterations that ultimately led to, excuse me, created a sort of 3D printed enclosure. And then this was the, the last piece, photon based circa 2016. So what I want to do with it now is actually a couple of different things. I want to modernize uh, this entire project. And the, the way that I want to do that Um, I mentioned the project as it stands today is actually running on a particle photon. So what I want to do is move it into a argon. I actually want to put it on one of particles new third generation devices. And that's what we're going to start doing today. So over the course of the next couple of weeks, my plan is to do all of this, right? Is to actually take the existing we're going to retire this photon based version of the project. We're going to breadboard out a new version. We're a couple of breadboards here ready to go. A bunch of jumper wires. Let me go back to that view. So all this good stuff over here. We're going to create a new version of this using a breadboard and new screen, new thermal couple connector. And we're going to get sort of back to where we are to see how easy it is to actually update the firmware uh, from two, three, two and a half years ago to using new hardware, using new, uh, same particle device, OS APIs, all that good stuff, but just using new hardware and new stuff. So, and then I also want to add something to it. There's actually another feature that I want to add as we go through this process. So we're going to start with firmware. Once we get it ported, I will in a future stream actually move from the breadboards and create a new version of this PCB in Eagle. So we'll go through that process on a stream as well. And then we can, um, and we'll order boards, we'll assemble it, get a new product out of this. And hopefully that'll keep us busy on the Tuesday streams, maybe even bleed into Thursdays uh, for the next couple of months or so. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first step in this process, and I'll show you, I actually have a, a GitHub repo up for this. Um, let me copy that into the chat. Oop, that's not right. Just copy that into the chat. The name of this project is Brew Buddy. Uh, I did a little bit of cleanup on the GitHub repo earlier today, so you can see uh, a little bit of what's actually going on in there. But as I ported this repo, there's a couple of things that I noticed that, uh, that are different, things that actually changed from back when I uh, created this. I think the last time that I did anything with it was in September, October of, of 2016. So like I said, about, about two and a half years ago. So I'm using actually a couple of different libraries here, firmware libraries. Uh, I have the Adafruit GFX library. I'm also using the Adafruit ILI 9341, which is the firmware library for this, uh, for this screen. And then I'm using the SparkFun Max 31855K, which is this, this Type-K thermocouple 
uh, library that I'm using to do temperature sensing of the wart. Um, but I've actually pulled all of these libraries in. They're just, I'm, I didn't actually pull the libraries in, I just pulled in the complete source. And I do wanna do library references on these instead. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually include some library references here in my Visual Studio Code project in Particle Workbench, and then remove the existing references, compile, and see how we go. And ultimately get this over to, uh, get this over to an argon. So that's gonna be my first step. And I'm gonna open up the, the command palette in Visual Studio Code and install library. And the first library that I want is the Spark Fun Max 318-55K. And this is a library that I've ported when I originally used this. So this is available on, on GitHub as well. So that library has been included. I should now be able to actually remove these two source files. What did I just do? No, 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 that's fine. Get the wrong thing highlight. Okay, now delete. No, no, delete that one, okay. Okay, so that reference is out. Uh, the next piece that I want to add is, the next library I want to add is the Adafruit ILI 93401, which actually should include the Adafruit graphics library by default, so I won't pull that one in yet. We'll see what happens when I compile. Adafruit ILI 9341. All right. So we've got those two libraries included. Those are in a library folder. Okay, and it actually did include the Adafruit MFGFX, which is a slightly <coughs> different version, but now I can actually include all of these, or excuse me, <clears throat> delete all of these files now. So I'll move that one to trash. Let's see, all right, now I'm going to try. So I'm gonna actually configure my workspace. Now I'm gonna configure this for an Argon device. This had been configured for a Photon before. So again, inside the command palette, I'm gonna click configure workspace for device. I'm gonna choose device OS 080 RC27. So that is for the Argon. Uh, and then I'm gonna, I haven't actually onboarded a new device yet. We're gonna do that in just a minute. Uh, but I know that I'm going to call this one Brew Buddy 3. No, 3. This is the third generation of the Brew Buddy project. You'll notice here that my Photon version was called Brew Buddy 2. Okay, that's been configured. So now a couple of different ways that I can do the compile here. I can again open up the command palette and click cloud compile application local. So I just want to see if everything works before I actually go through getting a new device and getting it online. Um, I can also click on this little icon here at the top to compile. So I'm going to do that and that's actually going to open up the terminal window and do a whole bunch of stuff with the local compiler on my machine. I will likely see a couple of warnings throw, uh, fly across, but I'll take a look for errors specifically. That's what I, I care about and what I want to avoid. So we'll give this just a few minutes.
And then when that's done, we'll actually we'll talk through the code just a, just a little bit. When this is done, if it works, I will get a target folder that shows up here inside of Visual Studio. fun um, and then I know there's a few things I want to do to clean this up but I'm, I'm confident so far I'm, I feel pretty optimistic that, that this is working and that's a good sign I feel like I would have gotten an error at this point now it's just a matter of waiting and anticipating for things to finish up uh, but while that's happening I actually want to um, I'm gonna turn something on really quick I actually have um, uh, another streamer, Brian Clark, created a Twitch highlighter extension, uh, which is really cool. So this is actually something that we can use during the stream uh, to walk through code. Y'all can highlight stuff if you notice any errors or anything like that. So I'm actually going to turn this on uh, and you'll now see a new chatter in the, uh, in the chat window, the Cyan Panda bot. Um, and the Cyan Panda bot is our wonderful helper that will help with... Uh, Twitch highlighting. So if you are, ah, you got it. See? Damn gosh, thank you. That didn't take long. Perfect. So that's exactly right. Just like damn gosh did, if you uh, want to highlight an individual line, just do exclamation mark line eight. Uh, to unhighlight, you can do line, I think it is. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you checking in on that. Uh, and seeing it in action. Now, this is a really cool that Brian has been working on on his streams uh, for a while now. So you can actually, as will likely happen on my stream, uh, if I mistype something, you can tell me, hey, Brandon, look, line 14. You, you totally did that wrong. This is terrible. Uh, and in the meantime, definitely check out uh, Clark O'Brien's um, Twitch channel. Follow him. He does really awesome stuff and also quite a Visual Studio Code aficionado and pro himself. So feel free to use that during the stream if you want to show me something that needs to be highlighted. And we're done. The compilation has completed. It will not be that fast. Or excuse me, <laughs> it won't be that slow uh, from this point forward. So that's good news. Um, compilation worked. That actually was faster than I anticipated. So the libraries. Uh, I suppose that means that, uh, that they will be working. But let's actually walk through uh, and take a look at some of this code here real quick so you can get an idea of what's happening. And I am going to, first I'm gonna bump the version up to 1.0. The two main um, external sensors, actuators that I'm using here are the SparkFun probe and then the Adafruit screen, which is I'm referring to as, as TFT. Um, I have a couple of variables that I've set up to do things like keep, la keep track of timing during each uh, check of the temperature. Right now I'm actually reading the temperature every five seconds, eh, probably relatively quick. Um, um, and then I have a few things here, variables that are actually dealing with setting the text on the screen uh, as I'm setting various text variables and, and things like that. And then for tracking, I have an array of temperature readings that I'm pulling in over time that's actually populating this little graph at the bottom. Uh, it just looks like a flat line right now. And then, oh yes, um, I want to clean this up because this thing is huge. So I'm going to do that really quick. I have a giant, um, <coughs> excuse me, a character array that represents the 
I don't know if you remember on startup that there's a little image that shows up on the screen that looks sort of like a, a barrel of beer uh, and a few other things. And that's actually in a, uh, <laughs> in a character array. This, this TFT actually has an SD card slot. So one of the things I'd like to do during the project is actually use images off the SD card instead of this. But right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually pull this out into another file and let's just call it beerbitmap.h. Uh, and I'm gonna copy my, look how long that is. Copy that entire thing. So now that that is in here, uh, I can delete it from here. And then I'll just add an include for Beer bitmap.h. There we go. Go ahead and compile locally. Just make sure I didn't do anything dumb. It should tell me pretty quickly. All right, that's good stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do now, since this was actually a few things that I actually had mapped in here or that I had set up inside the GitHub repo for this project was to include my library references and then remove the included source, which we've done. So now these are in a lib directory. Um, this lib directory, in fact, I wanna make sure for that. I don't need to actually include the libraries, so... Oh yeah, it will include the libraries directory. So let me... I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna... Let's see... I touched the get ignore for this. Maybe not. Oh yeah, it's already in here. Okay. So I'm gonna exclude the libraries directory from this as well. There we go. Cool. So the GitHub repo right now that I shared earlier actually has a couple of different things in it. If you go and look at the source. So there's the firmware that we're looking at today, right now in upgrading. Uh, there's a hardware project. The hardware project actually has the design files, the Eagle files for the enclosure. Damn gosh, awesome. Thanks for following. I appreciate it. Very, very cool. Happy to have you here. And thanks for already being in the chat. I appreciate it. And for those of you that are watching, feel free, feel free to, to lurk, hang out, just watch. Feel free to hit me up in chat. Highlight lines in my source code, whatever you want to do. Uh, happy to have you here just hanging out. So the hardware project has the, has the Eagle files for actually creating the custom PCB, which we'll go over uh, in a future stream. The firmware project, and there's also an enclosure project. This actually has the... Uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you for the encouragement. I love that. I appreciate it. Uh, and then there's an enclosure. Jeff Iden. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for following. I appreciate it. Uh, the enclosure is actually the 3D printed enclosure. Very, very poorly done 3D printed enclosure. But hey, we'll count it. It's okay. Um, so... All right, I think we are, we're in, a, we're in a decent spot on source. So that's number one, right? So I'm gonna check this in. Love checking in. Uh, updated library references. Close number one. And let's push that. 
Code Warrior, thanks for following. Appreciate it. <laughs> thanks for the comment, Jeff. Appreciate it. All right. So that one, done and done. Perfect. All right, so now we have the fun part. So I mentioned earlier that this entire project previously was based on was based on the particle photon. Um, I'll, I'll bring this down to remove the enclosure. So same, even though these boards are different, ultimately the same firmware here between those two. Um, and that's what I want to go through and modify, migrate. Um, the pins on the Photon and on the new Argon are slightly different. And so that's actually the next piece that we're going to do before we go through actually setting up this whole thing on a breadboard, which should be, should be an adventure in and of itself. Um, if you haven't seen it before, this is an autofocus here. This is an Argon. Um, it follows a feather wing pinout, Adafruit feather wing sort of footprint, which is really cool. So it works with any feather compatible hardware. Uh, and it has a bunch of GPIOs, digital analog pins that I can use, which is exactly what I need right here. So I'm gonna pop this in a breadboard so that I don't drop it. And then the next thing that we're gonna do Elite Storms, are you going to be utilizing any new features from the V3 boards? That is an awesome question. I appreciate you asking. I am. I absolutely am. Um, I don't know everything yet, but I do know that one of the things that I'm going to use um, for the new on the new boards is uh, I'm going to use sleep modes, which actually are, are just about to be released. So the devices will actually go in standby for long periods of time. That's not gonna be as important during the initial process where I'm actually monitoring the temperature over the course of the boil. But it will be important during the second part, which I'm gonna add a new feature for that I've hinted at, but that is actually detecting when fermentation begins 24 to 48 hours after uh, the beer is done boiling and is in the, in the carboy, often a closet somewhere waiting to do its thing, waiting for the yeast to do its thing. Uh, so I'll use sleep modes actually during that piece. And then in terms of any of the new mesh-based uh, functionality, uh, I'm not yet at this point, although you absolutely could. In fact, one of the nice things about this is that you could take a fleet of these boards and a bunch of different brews that are going on at the same time and actually use mesh communication to do pub sub between devices. Um, if you're just watching my stream for the first time, I did some streams over the last couple of weeks doing that with some RC cars that I hacked together. Definitely go check those out in the top nav video area, wherever. Um, feel free to check that out because there's some cool stuff that you can do with the new hardware. Um, but I also wanted to just exhibit through this is that you can use any of these new boards, the Argon or the Boron in standalone mode too, which is what I'm gonna do here. I'm actually not making these a part of a mesh network just yet. I can do that later, uh, but they work great as just standalone boards as well, similar to the Photon uh, and Electron today. All right, so the next step is to change my pin mappings. Um, and this is actually where I'm gonna do a couple of different things. I can keep some of these the same. Um, it looks like, oh, awesome. Thanks for the explanation. I'll definitely have to check out the mesh videos. Now, I haven't touched particles since right after the electron came out. Oh, cool, yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely give it a give it a uh, give it a look again. What I love about the new the new dev kits bias, of course, um, is that the Argon and the Boron Wi-Fi and cellular boards have the same footprint. They both use the feather uh, the feather pinout. And Adafruit at this point, I think, has released over sixty um, compatible feather wings. So there's all kinds of all kinds of awesome stuff out there that's uh, that's really easy to use. So yeah, thanks for asking the question. All right, so I'm gonna, I may have to like look down at my board every once in a while to make sure I get the references here. Right as well. But there's actually not a ton of pin mappings that I need to migrate. 
Uh, the big thing is that the, the Spark Fun Probe needs three pins. It needs a chip select, it needs to be mapped somewhere to VCC and ground. That's the important piece. Primarily because it's a spy piece of hardware or software uh, peripheral interface. A little biased, yes. You, thank you for forgiving me. I appreciate it. I'm totally biased. Although this project that I'm modernizing now, um, I started working on in 2015, long before, uh, long before I worked for Particles. So I, I, was, a, I was a customer long before, uh, before joining the company uh, and getting to do this, this, uh, this fun stuff all day long. So in the case of the, the thermocouple, I'm going to use, these are actually both SPY devices, but in the case of the thermocouple, I'm just going to use the built-in SPY bus on the Argon, which I'll show in the docks in just a second. And then in the case of the TFT, I'm going to use A2, A1, and A0, and I think I can probably keep those, keep those three the same since they're a digital Digital pins, right? Yeah, A1, A0, A2. Pretty clear. Okay. Um, and then what's cool about also, and I don't know, you, we'll see if I can actually hold this up under the screen a little bit. Yeah, it'll be too close. If you look super, it's it's not happening. Autofocus works unless you get crazy with it. Um, I will go to the docs to confirm, but the my my Mosi, Miso, and Serial Clock for those pins are actually printed on the silk screen of the Argon, so I don't have to guess. I can kind of figure it out by just reading. So let me update the docs here. Um, those are my A6, 7, and 8, basically. But I can just refer to them they're just there. A6, 7, and 8 are my um, SCK, MISO, and MOSI pins. Some of this is going to be an exercise in me trying to remember why I did certain things a couple of years ago. Like why I put the probe ground on digital pins. Let me look at the docs. The docs for the library that I created. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I need to update this library as well because the references are, are dated. It's been a while since I touched this. I could take a look at SparkFun's docs here as well. So I don't want to send myself down a path of doing something idiotic from the start. So I want to make sure Ah, oh, right, okay. That was what it is. I mean, so you can use any digital pin for VCC or ground. They need to be set accordingly. This actually, what they did for the example here, and I think this is what I ultimately did as well, is just map them, map them pretty cleanly. Just picked a couple of pins. And so um, I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use D2 and D3 here. Um, and I can't remember if I had to then come in. Uh, defined one. So I'm going to use my D2 and D3. Uh, oh, wait. I already have D3. Oh, for chip select, I'll use D4. It's just sort of keeping them all in a row.
And for, then for the screen, I think I can do that. A2, A0, A1, A2. My, the rest of my spy values will be at A6 through A8. So I feel pretty good about that. I think the next piece is going to be claiming, getting a brand new device claim. So let's actually go through and do that. Go back to the desktop here. And I'm going to say bye bye to this one. Few different uh, considerations here. I the autofocus is working. I'm going to add a Wi Fi antenna. So my Argon is online. There you go. Not online. It's it is blinking blue. So now I'm going to claim it. I'm just gonna use the mobile app for that. Scan the sticker. Yep. I have attached the antenna. Let's see if I can focus on my screen so you can see what's going on. Right, now I'm going to do a device OS update on that. That's going to take a minute or two. So let's let that happen. It's not focusing on my screen. That's right. It's just going through the update slowly, slowly, slowly at this point. So once that's done and I get it claimed, I'm actually going to put my put my devices here in a second breadboard so that we can work with them pretty cleanly. So those are going to be in here. This is the breakout board for the um, thermocouple. The probe is still here on the desk. And then of course my, my TFT, my screen. So we'll work with that. working it's working while that's going may not be a bad idea to talk about the next the other piece that I wanted to add to this project so I mentioned already I'm doing temperature monitoring throughout the process um, which is important not only not only during the boil but in, during the bring down I actually get the temperature down but I wanted to enhance this project to add detecting fermentation. And if you've ever done home brewing and you're fermenting inside of a carboy or sort of a, a barrel, you can either use 
well, it, it doesn't matter. But one of the things that is very common when you're fermenting with a carboy is to put this on a device, an airlock. Hi, David. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Thank you for using the hype swag, trash panda. Um, this is an airlock. The way the airlock works, it's basically just a um, just cylindrical tube. It has an opening at the bottom. You place this piece on top. You, well, you fill it with water to about here. You place this piece on top, cover it up. And then this actually goes in, this airlock actually goes inside of the carboy and sort of creates a seal. What then happens as the uh, yeast starts to activate, as my kids like to say, is it eats the sugar and poops alcohol. It's not really what it does, but I guess kind of. Uh, <laughs> that it will actually kind of start to knock this, this airlock the um, the air pressure will actually rise through this airlock and this will actually start to move. And so one of the ways you can detect ferm fermentation by eye is you see this kind of start to pop, pop, pop after 24 to 48 hours. So the thing that I would like to do to enhance this project. Oh, thank you, Elite Storms. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's awesome. I appreciate that feedback. Um, so what I want to actually do is create a knock sensor. So this is actually a, a little piezo disc. There's these, these can look a bunch of different ways, but this little thin piezo or piezo, I don't know, I, I don't know what the correct, correct pronunciation is, will actually go on top. And when it, I, I want to calibrate it to detect when fermentation happens. So that's the second thing uh, that I want to do. Hopefully we can actually start working on that today. We'll see. So far, so far, so good. Okay, so I've got, I'm updated. So now I'm presented with a choice. So I want to use the Argon in the mesh network or use it by itself. Um, like I mentioned, I'm just going to use it by itself. So I'm going to say don't use. Come on, camera. Let's say next. And now I'm going to get it connected. All I'm doing at this point is Similar as I would do in getting a photon line, I'm going to choose my among my available Wi-Fi networks. I'm going to pick my network. I'm going to enter the passcode. Quit looking. I know you're trying to see it. And then it's going to connect. It's going to create a connection to the particle device cloud, and then my photon will start breathing happily cyan when it's good to go. I've heard it called piezo most of the time. I, that's good. I, I have two nice long password. That's right. Um, yeah, I've heard it called piezo as well. I think I started called it piezo early. It sounds very Italian to call it piezo, but I think piezo is actually, is actually correct. Uh, and then the final step I'm asked to give my, my argon a name. And what did I say? I said I was going to call it Brew Buddy 3. So Brew Buddy 3. And I'm good to go. So I've claimed the device and now it's time to have the breadboarding fun. So I am, I'm going to, I have a whole bunch of wires. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this off to the side for a moment. So we're going to do some breadboarding. Uh, I am going to disconnect disconnect this for just a moment. And we're going to actually start the process of doing the breadboarding with my, with my jumper wires here. And I'm going to get my, let me get this out to reference for myself. So I can wire this correctly. Anybody want to start taking bets on whether or not this actually works, whether I wire it correctly the first time? Now's the time to take, take your bets. So let's actually start with a thermocouple. I'm going to try not to lean right in front of this. And my thermocouple has a chip select, an NC or no connect, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, 
SO, so uh, subordinate out, serial clock, VCC, and ground. So those are the ones that I'm going to commit. If I remember correctly, let's just hope you don't burn anything out. Yes. Uh, gosh, I hope not. I have. I've done it before. Um, I want to make sure that I actually connected. It's weird. I actually connected all of these, even the nail connect. How, how did that happen? What now? I had that connected nowhere. Huh. All right. I'm not gonna worry about it. Same four particles. Oh, so many. So many sad destroyed electronics. That's, that's, that's how we learn, right? That's how we learn. This is how I learn, by destroying. Moving, moving too quickly uh, and destroying things. Let me go back myself up a little bit here. All right. So I'm gonna start with uh, chip select on the Chip select on D4. Got experiment to learn. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. So Elite Storms, what was, what, was, uh, what are some of the things that you have built or did what you build with your electron or the photons in the past? I'm curious. to be finicky about wires so you'll see me like pulling off all these wires and stuff because I'm looking for the right colors even though the color of the wires doesn't matter I get sort of in that habit of like I want to use I want to use reds for reds for power blacks for ground so what did I say D21 BCC Then my ground. D3. I'm kind of like, this chat's obscuring this a little bit, so I'll try to keep it close to the center. Used to work for a company that built a, a power pole transformer monitor. Awesome. We use the electron to monitor oil temp and voltage and amp levels. Very fun stuff. Oh, that sounds awesome. Oh, that sounds very cool. And fun. I have not done much with high voltage. Um, I respect, I respect high voltages greatly, as one should. Had a fleet of 50 or so testing before I left the company. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. That's a good sized fleet. Especially for, for testing. All right. So SC, SCK, me. So if it looks like I'm staring off, I'm actually looking at my source code so I can make sure to get this wiring correct. So I said SCK, MISO and MOSI, RNA 6 through 8. That should be relatively easy to figure out. Get some more wires for myself. SCK, SCK. Oh, 
trying to remember here. I built there's nothing to joke about. I let the EE guys, I let the EE guys deal with the electronics. The power guys deal with the high voltage stuff. I just wrote the data collection software. That's cool, but that's a fun piece of it as well. And that's actually part of what I, I really love to do. I, I have a software background, spent most of my career as a web developer. And so I love, I love the software and app side of embedded development because it's a lot of fun to, to help build solutions by doing the app side, like the data collection piece, the visualization piece, the control piece. Uh, that's a lot of fun. So, and thank you. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. All right. All right. I'd like to reference my other board here real quick. So maybe I did actually. Okay. So this is one of those areas where sometimes the labeling on silk screens can throw you off. Right, I wanna map my, um, MISO, right, which means main in, secondary out. Okay, the app side is what I also enjoy. Particle really makes it easy compared to what other IPIs have used. Oh, cool, yeah. Yeah, and I absolutely agree. Um, I love the API stuff. In my, my software streams, which I usually do on Thursdays, I'm actually going through using the, the particle backend API to build a libraries registry where you can actually search for, li for firmware libraries, find libraries, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm thinking I might actually be able to wrap that up, wrap that up on Thursday this week. I had fun fighting with OAuth last Thursday, and I got it. And so now it's time to add some search and paging and yeah, that should be fun on Thursday. So I want to go to main in secondary out. So that's secondary out, main in secondary out. Okay. All right. I feel, I feel relatively good about that. Awesome. Sounds like a fun, it is, it's, 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 a, it's been a lot of fun to work on that project. Um, and I've been doing it, it's it's sort of been excused, I've been doing it in Vue.js and Nuxt. Um, I've messed with Vue a little bit, but that's been a, a sort of an excuse to do something real world with, uh, with Vue. So I think we're in good shape now on the on this side on the thermocouple. So now it's actually time to wire up the screen. And I'm going to be referencing my you see me looking at this Board, it's because I'm sort of trying to remind myself what what I did. Okay. Just wanted to confirm that I actually had ground on the on the TFT wired up correctly ground on the board. So there we go. And then VN is my next. So VN went down to 3v3. Yeah, as it should. As it should. Jumper wires are fun, but good golly. Uh, 
Uh, there needs to be a word for pro procrastination by software. Yes. Yeah, there absolutely does. Um, some of my some of my best procrastination is, is not doing the other thing I should have been working on. I missed it, but are both of these devices spy? They are. Yeah, they are. Um, however, and I'm seeing when looking at the code, I actually used Hardware Spy for the TFT and the built-in software spy for Thermocouple, and I don't remember why, um, because it's been a little while. So I'm gonna replicate this as is, and then maybe see if I can put them both on the same spy bus to save myself uh, a couple of pins. But for now, just in terms of porting the software, which so far all I've had to do in order to port this firmware is just create the mapping to the, um, create the new pin mapping. So we'll see, we'll go from there. All right. So I'm just sort of going up the line here. The next piece, ground power. My third pin is DC. Remind myself what DC means. Oh, DC was on A1, okay. Some of these I don't need for the purposes of right now, but oh yeah, the reset was on a zero, which is my next one. That's too red. <laughs> reset. Zero. Oh, so many wires. And chip select was on A2. Uh, so my next pin is the SD card select, which I was so bummed about this. I actually had already spun these boards a couple of times before I realized that, um, that I needed to get my SD card on a separate chip select pin. And I've made this mistake a few different times. Learn my lesson now. Uh, so I didn't do that in this version of the board, but I want to in the future, but I'm not gonna wire it up just yet. Not just yet. I'm gonna stay, keep, keep the scope manageable for myself. Okay. All right, next up is here. You know what? Elite Storms, I think I'm wrong. Actually, these, these were both on the same spy bus. What I was just doing... Sidebar just for a second. Because I want to I want to confirm with myself. See whether or not I did this correctly. Basic graphics test. Yeah, it gives me both of the examples here. Right. Hardware spy, not software spy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm only setting the chip select and reset. Chip select DC. Data channel and reset. So the others I need to actually use the same A6 through 8 here. Which is, which is going to require me to actually make a little, slight little change to how this is oriented. 
in the breadboard. That's okay. For now, uh, chip select was A2, so that's good. Chip select, A2. Great. So, I'm gonna move my argon over just one column. Busy, busy. So I can actually get into my miso, mosi, and SEK. Need another column of those for ETFT. So let's do SEK. obsess about why of colors right now. Y'all can't see these anyway. I can barely see them. No see. And finally miso. Try not to destroy these. Okay, uh, so we are wired. Not yet sure if we are wired correctly, but we are wired for something. It would appear as though the screen is being properly is properly connected. So let's, let me go into, oh, go back into split screen, and move all this down so you can see. All right. Moment of truth, well, Moments, moment of truth in a minute. Gonna flash, we got Brew Buddy 3 online. Uh, it is still running Tinker, the default firmware, so it's nothing on there. But I can now flash it. I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I actually want to, in my Add another I'm just gonna add my version tag. This for fun. Add that as a particle publish. Good news, it compiled. Now let's go ahead and actually just flash. And I'm gonna do a flash. Do a cloud flash. 
And it should, yeah, it's gonna flash Brew Buddy 3. See the notice at the lower, lower right hand side there. So I should start seeing some messages here. The flash started. My device is blinking magenta right now, which means it's putting on new firmware, which is cool. And we'll see. Okay, offline. Fingers crossed. Okay, I'm back online, but nothing's happening. So I don't think it actually got mine. Oh. All right, so it has my dope to dope. Let me reset. All right, so whoever took the, I wasn't gonna be able to wire it up correctly the first time. You're correct. You got me. However, it's not. Well, now it's saying it's online. It's kinda slow. All right, so now it's time for some debugging. All right. And I might actually break out the schematic on the old version of the board. curious why I did that. No, that doesn't matter. The screen is the thing that's not working right now. But I could, since I'm here, is what I could do. Print reading. Actually, let's see what sort of temperatures we're getting here. So I'm going to start a brew, even though the screen is not working. Let's see if the temperature. Oh, wait, I have to say start. Seventy six point five. Gonna read these will come across every five seconds. So I mean that's a good sign. Seventy seven. I'm holding on to the end now. Let's see. Let's see. So I have my seventy eight. Okay. Okay, so the good news is I did it halfway correct. The thermocouple is properly wired up, so that's a good sign. Let me stop this.
All right. Let's switch back over here and uh, let's do some spelunking on the board itself. So I don't know if you can tell, but I can actually see the screen is like, is lighting up. So I think it's, it's obviously it's appropriately getting power and ground. It's somewhere else in the, somewhere else that the, the problem is happening. And I'm wondering if I did my spy wiring incorrectly. Ground power. Data channel. on A1. Reset is on A0. Reset's on A0 and then A2 should be chip select. Make sure I'm not like misaligned. So then MOSI I wonder if I've got these three backwards. I think this may be my SEK should be correct. There's only one place to put it. So so maybe. Of course, one of the things that just occurred to me is that maybe that this, oh. maybe there's something wrong with the screen. My other screen here is not, it's not soldered in to the board, so I can take it off. I just need to remove some screws that aren't even really in. Get these out of here. And it wouldn't be the first time that I improperly or I messed up a screen without realizing it. That song was way too epic for what's happening right now. What's happening right now is not epic. This is debugging. This is flailing about. This one's, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see about this one. I'm just, I'm not doing nothing. I'm, I'm sort of unthreading some screws from the, the other TFT right now. So bear with me. Pass. Almost there. Okay. So let's let's see if this screen was the cause.
Yes! Sometimes, sometimes it's not you, it is the hardware. Not always, sometimes it is the hardware. So now I wanna know, do we count that as first try? Do we count that as first try, folks? I kinda wanna count it as first try. I mean, I feel like that was a pretty decent wiring job by yours truly. I've done far worse in the past. Far, far worse. I feel pretty jazzed about that. Pretty jazzed. All right. So, get excited. I know the screen's upside down. Here, you know what? Let me flip it. I will flip it. So y'all don't have to stare at it upside down. Is that better? That's better. Okay. So now we are going places. We're online. Let's see, I didn't really do a test. Y'all wanna, should we test with the hot pot? Hot pot. I love hot pot, it's good food. The hot plate. Real quick. Can't keep it straight. Hot plate is on. Click start. Should be back online. We're at 87 already. Woo! 88. It's working. Screen's doing its thing. Nope. There it is. Our. Can y'all see? There we go. Once again, turn that off so I don't burn myself or anybody else. Although there's no one else in here. That was pretty exciting. So the long and the short of it is that really all that I had to change in order to get this moved from the Photon over to the Argon was just change the pin mappings. If you look at the my source here, the diff between, I mean, we're talking about three. I removed that, that's really more of a cosmetic thing than anything. Yeah, I changed three lines of code and they're just pin mappings. That's it, and everything sort of just worked. So pretty happy about that. Oh, here, let me stop. Yeah, we'll let it keep going. So that's awesome. Blast. Blast. Yep, yep. What was I looking for? This was change the pin mappings, get the existing version running. Both of those are done. Sure, let's do it. I may be able to wire up a breadboard on the first try, but I certainly can't type anything correctly on the first try. Awesome, that's pushed. Okay, so now for the last piece that I had planned for today, 
Uh, and this should be fun. And this is actually adding the piezo as a knock sensor. So um, I mentioned, if you are just joining us, what I've done so far is to take an existing piece of hardware that I had running on a particle photon and port it to the argon. Um, I made a few other changes because it's been a while since I've, I've looked at this project at this library. Um, but everything else worked. It just worked with a couple of pin mapping changes. But I want to do more than just sort of port and be done. We're going to spin a new board and all that probably next week. Um, but I want to take this piezo and use it as a knock sensor on top of an airlock so that anytime I get fermentation, See, this is, for, this is my fermentation animation. Look, it's fermenting, it's knocking this. It's not quite so violent. Yeast is much gentler than I am. Uh, but read that, do something with it. So the two pieces that I need for this to work are the piezo, this little guy, and then a one mega ohm resistor. These, just one of them, but this is a lot of them, these. So, let me switch back to the main big, big camera view. And what I want to do here is I'm going to put this sensor on. Obviously, this needs to be on an analog pin. I'm trying to decide what pin to put it on. I have A3 and A4 available right there in the middle. Future reference, these piezos, these these particular little thin piezos, very, very fiddly little wires. So I'm a tad bit concerned that this isn't gonna plug into the breadboard correctly. Which would have been helpful to think about before the stream, but hey, here we are. Um, one side of this piezo Positive side goes into the appropriate pin. So let's do a four. These are really thin. All right, you want to watch my back for a second. I'm actually going to put some solder on these wires to give them a little bit more. Eh. Eh. I think that helped somewhat.
So the positive side is A3. I'll put my other side into ground. that my mega, my one mega ohm resistor is going to sit across these. Let's do A4. Headley. But I think I got it. And then resistor in there as well. Ah, it came out. Don't pick it up, Raymond. All right. Okay. So it's wired up somewhat. So now let's actually add the sunlight streaming. Let me fix that. sunlight around here. All right. So what did I... A4. A4. So I'm going to set A4 as my knock sensor pin. With a very obvious comment. And I want to, I need to set this as an input just to be explicit. Alright, I'm going to short circuit this piece for now because there's a bunch of state management stuff that we need to do. Is active means that this part of the loop actually only runs when the brew has been started. So this is the main piece. Nothing really happens before the brew is started. Um, and so we're going to need to do some more to differentiate between those different stages, those different pieces of the brewing stage from the initial boil to the secondary boil and some code cleanup that needs to happen in there. Um, but that's for another, for another time. Right now, what I just want to do is just do an analog read of the, of the sensor. So let's see. And I will do analog read of the knock pin. Okay. 
And then I'm going to immediately do a serial. Print LNF and just spew out that piece of data there. And then we'll just do a serial. We'll monitor my serial port there. So let's go ahead and flash it again. And I will use the particle CLI to monitor. I think I'm on the wrong one. Oh, it's offline. That'd be why. All right, try this again. I meant the argon. Ah, so fast. Oh yeah, I was gonna put a delay in there. Make sure those aren't like garbage values. Let's flash it again. Okay, when it comes back online, Six, six, six. Okay, you see when I tap it, it's giving me, it's giving me high, and it's not hard. Like I don't have to, so that's a knock, that's a hard knock. But if it, if it moves directly, So I can get some sort of sense of, this is gonna take, take a bit to calibrate. I need to get, let me add myself up. And frankly, what I, what I wanna do for railroad testing is to take this, put some water in it, and then sort of figure out what, hap what I get on top when this is, disturb so that I can get some sort of a reading 
But for now, so when, when nothing's happening, I'm getting, all right, I think it's come out. Oh, there's no way that's happening. Yeah. For now, I think I'd like to say any value over 100. So that's what I want to do. So if talk about is greater than 100, then do something then. And what I'll do is write to the screen. Do this. Delay. Sort of fun. This is all we cleaned up, taken out. Famous last words, right? That's sort of my default state. All right. So let's flash that again. screen loads and all that good stuff. I should be able to lightly tap this and get a uh, wait for it to get online. It says waiting. Is it reset? Must have reset again. All right. So knock, knock detected. Knock detected. I don't know if y'all see that on the screen. Knock detected. So I'm just sort of lightly tapping it and getting that to see what's happening. And it's all going to come out, but you can kind of see that happening on the screen. So I think that's actually gonna work pretty well. Uh, I need to get the, I need to get the buzzer, I need to get the piezo on some, basically connected to some more durable wires. It's gonna to need to be longer anyway, cause it's gonna ultimately have to sit on the top of the, uh, on the top of the carboy. But this is a good start. I feel actually pretty good about, um, where this is for testing. I need to calibrate the sensor, sort of figure out, um, and I need to sort of add, I'll, even though this is a hardware task, I'll add this in here. Um, stronger wires to piezo. Uh, I need to do some, I just had a thought a second ago and now I have forgotten, it's gone. Because the next step, now that I've got this working, is to actually get it configured properly during different phases, right? I don't want to read from the knock sensor when I'm brewing, and I don't want to read from the thermocouple when I'm fermenting. And so there was initially in this project some idea of state management. So like, if you go through the code, there actually is some brew stage sort of code in here. But right now, really, all that's in here in terms of starting is just starting and stopping. Oh yeah, that's right. Use the SD card. Yeah, we actually use the SD card for images. So that's another thing that we can do. 
Um, and so with that, so once I can get these things done, calibrate the knock sensor very briefly, get stronger wires on there, and then get the SD card properly wired up onto the breadboard, I will have everything I need to actually then move this into a new, uh, into a new PCB. So I can take this photon based version uh, of the Brew Buddy PCB and spin a new board and we'll do that in Eagle. So my plan at this point is to actually spin a new board on the stream next Tuesday for the next iteration of the hardware, the hardware hacking stream. Thursday, I'm gonna get back to the particle libraries um, registry, the firmware libraries registry that I've been working on, hopefully wrap that up. And then we can spend next Tuesday actually having some fun in Eagle, which is a great uh, CAD piece of software for, for building PCB. So get this done, get it sent off to Osh Park, which is a great fab uh, based here in the US. And uh, and we'll uh, we'll do the best. Uh, we, you know, we'll make the most of what we got there. So that's all I got for today. Um, this actually went really well. There are not not a ton of hiccups. So I appreciate those y'all that hung around, uh, stuck with me, made comments, elite storms, and in particular appreciate you jumping in back and forth and hearing about your um, particle projects that you had built in the past. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and I think actually we are, um, yeah, we're ready to uh, ready to lock it down, shut it down. So I'm actually going to move. Um, we're going to go in. I'm going to host uh, Robert Tables right now. He's actually in the middle of streaming right now. So let's go ahead and uh, and host him. And I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. So thank you all for hanging out, for spending some time with me today. And um, yeah, let's do this again on Thursday. So join me. Same time, actually, 3 p.m. Central on Thursday, uh, and we'll keep on going. So thank y'all. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.